How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today we're in a battle versus Gore in the Smogon overused here from the Discord server. Stick around till the end for a bonus battle and with that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Gore. So they're gonna lead off with Cinderace as I expected. Um, kinda. I kind of expected Landorus or Cinderace to be the lead. Um, so that kind of worked out for us as I lit off with Blastoise. So I can just freely go for a surf now and get some damage off on something. Um, I haven't led Sock and Shell Smash by any means, but um, I am going to surf, that's for sure. So let's see what they do. Okay, they go for a U-turn, um, confirming they are Libero as well, because sometimes they don't run Libero. If they're caught changed, they don't run Libero, apparently. So anyway, they are also Life Orb, which is good to know. So let's see what they withdraw into. Probably the Zapdos, if I had to guess. Like, maybe I should have gone for an Ice Beam predicting that, but I think Goldengo or Zapdos is probably the way to go for this team. All right, it's Goldengo. So getting free damage off on the Goldengo is going to be nice. We can break a potential Air Balloon as well, which they do have the Air Balloon, which is good to know. So we go for a Surf. That's going to do a good 50% to it, which tells me it's a speedy Goldengo instead of a bulky one. But as always, if you enjoy this video and you want to see more daily Pokemon Wi-Fi battles, be sure to drop a like and subscribe so you don't miss out. And with that being said, let's get out of here. Um, probably going to have to switch out into... If we expect a Thunderbolt or a Shadow Ball... Hmm. It's a tough one, that is. I think we should out... No, we don't outspeed. We definitely don't outspeed. Um, we've got half health. They probably Shadow Balls in the face because they don't have to go for Thunderbolt. And they probably don't have Thunderbolts. Um, what's my switching to Goldengo on this team? Oh, wow. Am I just staying in Surf? They go for a Recover, so they do outspeed us, and they do show that they have Recover, um, which is good to know. I'm just going to stay in and Surf real quick. There we go. Surf comes through. We get a crit, which is a bit more damage than the last time, which is nice. So they probably don't Recover. They probably just attack us now. If we're going to stay in and continue to Surf, they probably attack us with a Shadow Ball or something. Um, so what I'm going to switch into is I'm going to go into my Arcanine. Arcanine can definitely take a Shadow Ball. And it can definitely take a Thunderbolt, that's for sure. Make it rain. We might be able to take one of those. Uh, I don't think they would go for that against the Blastoise, though, because it wouldn't KO. Um, so they go for a Shadow Ball. There we go. So we get the switch in on the Arcanine, which is great. So it does half. Taking a lot of half damage this game. Um, looking at the team, I would say probably better off predicting them switching to Garchomp. Because Garchomp takes both Flare Blitz and Head Smash pretty well. And it has rough skin probably with Rocky Helmet. So we should make a double here. We should make a double here. Or they go Landorus as well. Landorus is also a possibility. I kind of just want to get the KO on the Goldengo though as well. Um, No, they're definitely going to go into Garchomp or the uh, Landorus right now. So if we predict Garchomp or the Landorus, we should go into something like Blastoise again. So let's, let's do that. Let's go into Blastoise. So we'll withdraw Wildfire. We'll make a double. And we'll go into Blastoise, expecting either the Landorus or the Garchomp to come through. They do withdraw the Goldengo as expected, so it wasn't a bad play. And they go into Landorus. So Landorus is a bit bad because if it's defensive Landorus, we've got an opportunity here to get another Surf off on something, um, which would be great. So let's try and do that. We do get the White Herb on the Intimidate, which is really unfortunate for us. Um, let's go for the Surf. There's no real reason not to. We, we should outspeed if they're defensive. If they're not defensive, we, we do outspeed, though, which is great. And that's going to do a lot of damage to the Landorus. They go for a U-turn, and that's not going to get the KO on Blastoise. But, but, but it's fine. Because here's the thing. If they go Goldengo here, and they go for a Recover, we're going to do more damage because of Torrent. Yeah, Goldengo comes in, so they can't really heal with Goldengo. I don't think Blastoise is the key to winning this game. I mean, uh, Shell Smash does do pretty well against their entire team. Like, I could. But I don't think we need it to win. I mean, it's already done enough so far. So I'm going to go for a Surf real quick. Um, they do go for a Shadow Ball to finish us off. I couldn't really switch anything in there. Um, even Galarian Slow King does not take the Shadow Ball very well here. Uh, so I can have to do that. So anyway, Landorus is weakened. So they have Garchomp as an option. But I think the, the play here is to go for the Superior. Because they're gonna, they've got Recover, they've got Shadow Ball, they've definitely got Make It Rain. Nasty Plot is what I'm thinking the next attack is. Nasty Plot. Um, but we have got the advantage here because Superior does really well against their entire team. So let's go into Superior. All they need to do is Terra to kind of screw us over in some regard. But um, we definitely Terra here in their mind. So we go for a Leaf Storm because they probably switch out anyway into something like the Zapdos. 
So they do withdraw the Goldengo, expecting us to maybe Terra into a Terra Fire or Terra Ground. They're going to go into Garchomp, which is going to get smacked in the face of this Leaf Storm. Um, so what are the chances there's Scarf Chomp? Because that's like an old set. It's an old gold set, that is. We can take any hit from a Scarf Chomp, no problem. And we can just go for another Leaf Storm right now. Because they, they can't tear into anything that can take the Leaf Storm. So Superior looks like it's coming through this game. So there we go. We get the Superior Special Attack twice, which is amazing. Garchomp goes down. And now I'm looking at that team and I'm thinking it's very weak to Arcanine. Now that the Garchomp's gone and the Landorus is weakened, it is very weak to Arcanine. That is for sure. So we don't want to stay in against this Cinderace. That is also for sure. Um, we don't really need Sloking too much. So I'm going to go in Sloking because Sloking can probably take a hit from this thing. They probably go for a U-turn anyway to get the Libero stab. So it's like... We may as well just go in Sloking. <laughs> because... Uh, I don't know, it just it makes more sense. So they go for a Gunk Shot. They're going to turn into a Poison type. It's not going to miss. It's going to do no damage, though. And we get some Life Orb Chip on them, which is great. So I didn't know they'd have Gunk Shot, but that's a good move to have because that would have definitely hit um, something for super effective damage. Why were they going with Gunk Shot? What were they predicting? Because Fire Powerball hits... I mean, they probably predicted the Arcanine, maybe. Um, because I don't think Rock resists Poison, does it? I don't know. Anyway, let's go for a Thunder Wave because I'm trying to predict something here. So they go for a U-turn, which isn't Stab anymore, so it's not going to do nearly as much damage. And I'm hoping we see a Moltres Galar here or something. I'm not hoping for a Goldengo, that's for sure. Um, they probably expect us to go for a Chili Reception here, which I should have probably gone for. But I wanted to get Paralyze off. Um, but then again, Goldengo is a prime switch. So Thunder Wave ain't going to work, I'm afraid, because of that good Oz Gold. But if we're going to paralyze the Cinderace, that would have been amazing, to be honest with you. So, um, not the end of the world. So, anyway. Anyway, let's go for a Chili Reception because they probably recover here. They do recover. So, we can get a free switch into the Gold Engo with the Arcanine right now. Um, which is going to be great. So, let's go for that. Chili Reception. The snow doesn't benefit us, but we get a free switch in for anyone wondering why I'm running Chili Reception. Um, because I have had that question quite a few times. Why are you running Chili Reception with no snow Pokemon? It's purely so you can get a free switch in, and because the snow doesn't like it doesn't negatively affect you in any way, so um, may as well type thing. Uh, they also could have expected the Terra Fire on the Superior, which is why they went for the Gunk Shot. That's also a possibility. Let's go into the Arcanine though. There's no reason not to go into the Arcanine because even if the Rocky Helmet on the uh, Landorus, we only take Rocky Helmet Chip. We don't take the Flare Blitz Recoil because of Rockhead. So we go for a Flare Blitz 100% of the time here. We go for the Flare Blitz. They do, in fact, let the Goldengo go down, which is fantastic for me. They didn't really have a good switch. And Arcanine does really well against their entire team. Like, for real. Like, it took out the Goldengo. Head Smash obliterates everything. So, Landorus comes in, which is fine. They get the Intimidate off, which is also fine. I'm pretty confident Flare Blitz takes it out, but I'm going to switch out anyway because Corviknight is... A, you know, we've got Corviknight. We may as well switch into the Landorus. It's not like Landorus gets any good recovery moves anyway. So, we may as well do that, right? Yeah, I think that's that, That's the right way to go. So, doesn't affect Noctis, obviously. Um, they didn't go for a Stealth Rock, which is good to know. I'm going to go for a Brave Bird because they probably... Yeah, I was going to say they probably either stay in an attack or they go for a Stealth Rocks. Or a Taunt to stop us from defogging the next turn Stealth Rocks. But either way, Landorus goes down. We do get some Rocky Helmet Ship. Corviknight is the GOAT. For taking out Landorus like that. Amazing stuff. But they can just bring in Cinderace or the Zapdos now. And to be honest with you, I'm thinking Corviknight's kind of, you know, it's had its it's had its way. So Cinderace comes in. Um, this thing can definitely take us out of a Pyro Ball since it's Life Orb and not Heavy Duty Boots. I am going to go for the Brave Bird just on the off chance. I could Terra Dragon to resist the Pyro Ball, but I don't want to waste my Terra just now. When it could still come in handy. So they go for a Pyro Ball, which we might actually live. We don't live. <laughs> no, there's, there's no chance that Corvin and I live that. But we're in a good position because that, Cor that Cinderace is weakened. And if we really want to do it, so they've got U-Turn, they've got Pyro Ball, they've got Gunk Shot. What are the chances they have Sucker Punch? And I want to bring Go Lurk in because I am worried about the Sucker Punch. And I'd rather scout for it, see if they have got it. Because I know I can live a Sucker Punch. Um, so it's a matter of whether I you know, do or not. Um, so, do I go for a Dynamic Punch here? I think I go for a Dynamic Punch just in case I suck a punch. They are U-turn. So they are, they haven't got Sucker Punch by the looks of it. 
That does no damage, but we're going to get a free dynamic punch off on probably the Moltres Galar if they're thinking about Poltergeist. If they're thinking about Poltergeist, then it's probably Moltres Galar coming in. I'd guess. I'd guess. All right, Zapdos is the one that comes in. That's fair enough. Uh, Zapdos can't really do much to us, but we can definitely dynamic slap it. <laughs> Why did it do the slapping animation on the Zapdos for a dynamic punch? Why didn't it do the punching animation? It has a punching animation. Anyway, Zapdos comes in. We can't really do much to it. It's probably going to go for a Volt Switch, expecting us to switch. Um, or a Roost. I think it gets Roost, actually. Um, so maybe we could have gone for a dynamic punch again there, but... Eh, uh, be right. So we withdraw our... Go look, and we will go into our nice and powerful Drip Queen, who is somehow still alive. And um, we just kind of expect them to get hit in confusion or go for a Volt Switch here. One of the two. Um, they do get hit in confusion, which is great. Absolutely fantastic, in fact. Um, so if we assume they're going to switch out or stay in Volt Switch on Roost... We should 100% of the time go into our Arcanine here by going for a Chili Reception. So I'm going to go for the Chili Reception. They are staying in to get their Confusion and stuff. Um, which they do They do break through. They go for a Volt Switch. They go for the Volt Switch. Now what? Now what do they do? What do they do? Cinderace comes in. That's great and all. I could have gone for a Sludge Bomb there. I should have done really, but oh well. We go for a Chili Reception anyway. That's going to get us a free switch in on the Cinderace, which is fantastic. Um, and now I, I am going to go back into... Because they clearly don't have Sucker Punch, right? We're, we've come to that conclusion, right? So if we assume they got no Sucker Punch, we could go Arcanine, we could Head Smash. I want Go Look to come in. I want Go Look to come in again. Because A, that Zapdos is on Death's Door. And I think Go Look can really put in some work here. So I'm going to go for another Dynamic Punch. They do go for another U-turn, which is going to do not much damage to us. There we go. I think they either go into the Galarian Moltres here. Or they go back into the Zapdos, obviously. It's one of the two. Has to be one of the two. They're the two remaining Pokemon after Cinderace. So, I personally think they'll go Moltres, but they go Zapdos. Okay, so they go Zapdos. Zapdos didn't take the Dynamic Punch nearly as well as they probably wanted it to. So we slap it in the face, once again, getting Confusion. Because it's guaranteed confusion with dynamic punch. If you're wondering why I'm hitting my dynamic punches so much, it's because I have no guard. That's, that's the reason that I'm hitting them so much. So let's go for another dynamic punch. I'm feeling go lurk time. They go ahead and get confused. Are they going to break through? They do, and they go for a roost. Which, if you didn't know, the turn that you go for roost, you lose your flying typing, which means this dynamic punch nearly takes them out, which is great. We do get static, which is unfortunate. But it was bound to happen eventually because we hit it three times. So let's go for another dynamic punch. They Can they break through confusion? I hope they do. They do. And they go for a roost. Hopefully we can break through paralysis because we will take it out with another dynamic punch. We do go for the dynamic punch. And we do take out the Zapdos, which is amazing. So Golurk came through. What an absolute legend. So it took out... What did it take out? They took out the Zapdos. That's all it took out. So Moltres comes in. Nice and shiny. Looking like the Kanto version. Gotta love it. Um, we do not let them set up. So we have to stay in and Dynamic Punch here. They go for a Fiery Wrath. That's fine. Take out Golurk. It's fine. Honestly. I would rather take you take me a Golurk out with a critical hit Fire Wrath. Not that I'm mad. Um, as opposed to setting up an agility as I switch out to my Galarian uh, Golurk. Sorry. So, that's great. Now, they haven't terrored yet. So, it's a real question of what do we do. Um, I'm leaning towards glaring. I'm leaning towards the glare tech, to be honest with you, with Superior. But at the same time, I'm also leaning towards the Arcanine. So, I think I'll just go with the Arcanine. The Arcanine seems like an obvious one, but I, I feel like they're going to terror. I really feel like they terror here. Um, unless they don't have a good Terra, but I'm sure they do. Let's try and go for a Head Smash. So they do Terra. What type are they going to Terra into? Steel? If it's Steel, then that, make, that makes sense. But if it's anything that doesn't resist Rock, Fighting, okay, that makes sense as well. So they probably go for a Terra Blast here or a Fiery Wrath. But we force the Terra at least. So Head Smash comes through. And the great thing is we haven't terra yet. So they go for the Terra Blast. Arcanine's going to go down to the Terra Blast, which is fine. 
Boom, 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 boom. Pow, getting absolutely beaten up by that Moltres. So now that they've terrored, we're in a better position because now it's not resistant to Leaf Storm for a start. So we can go Superior, which is great. So Superior comes through. We definitely Terrify here. And we definitely Leaf Storm. We Terrify because they probably go for an Air Slash. We'd rather not take, you know, super effective damage from that. So let's go for that Terrify Leaf Storm, like so. Um, Terrify Leaf Storm, obviously it doesn't boost the Leaf Storm, but us being terrified is great here because we're not going to get hit by the Air Slash. And hopefully we can clean this game up because we've got three minutes left. This is actually a pretty good game. So we go for the Leaf Storm. We don't miss, which is nice. And that doesn't take out the Moltres, but it does give them a Berserk boost. That's the, that's the only problem with this. Berserk boost. Which means this Air Slash probably is going to nearly KO us. Which means we're relying on Glorian Slow King to take out that. But the Air Slash won't KO us. That's, that's fine. But the Cinderace outspeeds the Superior. So we go for a Leaf Storm here. And as long as we don't miss, we should be alright. Leaf Storm comes through and misses. That's really unfortunate. That's really unfortunate. That is really unfortunate for Superior. Huh. So, Superior goes down, missing a Leaf Storm. And I know Cinderace would have taken out anyway, but I would rather have my Galarian Slow King at a better HP stat than it's at right now. Because, obviously, all we can do is go for a Sludge Bomb here. Um, so we lose to the Fiery Wrath, I think. It's gonna, not going to take us out this turn, but it'll take us out the next turn as it does. Um, we go for the Sludge Bomb. Actually gets a crit and takes out the Moltres, so that's not too bad. So, so there is actually a possibility here that we could win because if you didn't know, Pyro Ball is not 100% accurate move. Gunk Chai isn't either. U-turn is, so they could probably just go for a U-turn to take us out right now, but they might not. They might try and go for a Pyro Ball. <laughs> so we could still win this if they try and go for a Pyro Ball. And I mean, you know, if I miss a Leaf Storm, then I think I have the right to bank on them missing a Pyro Ball, right? So let's go for a Sludge Bomb anyway. And they go for a U-turn to take us out, which is going to turn them into a bug type, making it stab, meaning I have no chance in heck to take it. But GG God, that was a pretty fun one. It's a shame about the Leaf Storm miss, because if I had my Sloking at full HP against the Cinderace, it would have been a different story. But, hacks happens, it is what it is. It's GG regardless. I enjoyed that one. That was a really fun game. And we have ourselves a bonus battle. This time we're in a bonus battle versus Ron, or I have to close my account. <laughs> That's that name on... Discord, very bizarre. But anyway, anyway, stick around to the end for the team rental code, of course. And with that being said, let's jump straight to the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Ron. So they're going to lead off with Gliscor, as I expected, as I led off with Blastoise, predicting the Gliscor lead. I figured they'd want to get the Stealth Rocks and Spikes up straight away, um, since our team is fairly weak to them. Um, so right now, I can just go straight for an Ice Beam, and I'll hurt something on their team for some decent damage, except from the Gold Dengo, of course. Um, I don't think they go into... Well, they, they probably do go Gold, Gold Dengo, if anything. It could be a very similar case as to what it was last time. But I'm going to go for the Ice Beam anyway, just to see. The Ice Beam comes through. They weren't expecting us to Ice Beam. There's no way. As Gliscor goes down, which is absolutely amazing start to the second game. Absolutely an amazing start to the second game. Thank you, Blastoise. You absolute legend. And in comes the Dark Cry. So as I said in the first game, if you enjoy this video and you want to see more daily Pokemon Wi-Fi battles like this one, be sure to drop a like and subscribe so you don't miss out. So what can we do against this Dark Cry? Um, if we could Terra, we can Terra. But if we were already Terra'd, then the Galarian Sloking would be amazing for this. So instead, I'm going to have to stay in Ignorosphere because they might set up a nasty plot, which I really don't want them to do. They go for a Dark Pulse, which is going to sting Blastoise quite a bit, but it doesn't do it KO us as we go for an Aurosphere, showing how strong we are. I did, I fought it at 2 at KO us, which is why I didn't go for a Shell Smash, I, to be honest with you. So I guess Aurosphere is the way to go here. <laughs> they withdraw Dark Cry because they know they, they don't want to lose the Dark Cry, which is fair enough. What are they going to go into? Aloma Mola or go, go, Goldengo? Aloma Mola is what comes in. Now, we can't really touch Aloma Mola other than our Aura Spheres, and they aren't doing that much damage. However, they can't really touch us, so I'm going to Shell Smash in this thing's face. So there we go, we Shell Smash in its face. They probably go for a Wish, if anything. Now our Blastoise is a big threat to their team already, which is amazing. So Blastoise sets up, gets its uh, boost in its special attack and speed, and its attack, not that it matters. And now let's see what this Aloma Mola does to us. So we get the White Herb bringing us our defenses back. They go for a flip turn. Expecting us to switch because we couldn't really do anything to it. And the Aloma Mola is going to go back. Now we outspeed everything on their team. 
What do they have planned for us? In comes Darkrai once again. This thing still is coming in strong. Now, if we assume they're going to Terra, I should go for a Surf here, right? They go. They still have speed? Are they Choice Scarf? Choice Scarf Darkrai apparently is the thing. I, I guess like I, 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 I haven't faced many Darkrai, so I, I didn't know. I didn't know for, sh like, for sure, but... um. So we got a couple of options here. Uh, we can either go superior and leaf storm this thing in the face, or we can go into our uh, Corviknight and go for a U-turn. That's also an option. I think Corviknight U-turn is the better option because they're not going to want to stay in against the Corviknight in case our body press. And then Darkrai does put a lot of offensive pressure on our team. So let's go for a U-turn, expecting them to either switch out or stay in and go for a Dark Pulse for some reason. They do withdraw the Darkrai. We're going to get some nice momentum going on right now. Um, and there's a nice sunset as well in the stadium. I like it when it's a sunset in the stadium. It looks really nice. So Aloma Mola comes in. We go for a U-turn. No damage, obviously. But um, they have got Rocky Helmet. That's confirmed, which is great. Great to know. Great to know. So now what do we do? Um, I'm leaning towards Superior. I think Superior is the only reason... The only thing relatively, you know, reasonable to do. Um, so I, I'm definitely going to go for a Leaf Storm here. There's no reason not to go for a Leaf Storm. That is for sure. So they withdraw the Aloma Mola. What are they going to bring in to take a Leaf Storm? That is the real question. They're going to bring in the Goldengo. Goldengo makes sense. They, I doubt they're Scarf Goldengo as well as Scarf Darkrai. So I think we're pretty safe. They are Air Balloon, which is good to know. We go for a Leaf Storm. We're going to get that nice boost in our special attack. So now the real question is, do we Terra or do we predict them to switch out into something to take the uh, Terra Blast Fire? Um, do I want to be a Fire type with the uh, Superior? That's the real question. Do I want to be a Fire type? I think it could benefit us, so I am going to go for the Terra Fire Terra Blast. Um, it looks like they haven't, they have stayed in, which is good to know. But can they take the Terra Blast from a Superior at plus two special attack? I don't think they can, unless they Terra themselves, which they could do. So let's see what they do. They don't Terra, they stay in, they try and take it like a champ. I don't think Terra Fire Superior is super common, so they probably didn't expect it. They probably expected us to switch out in something else, to be honest with you. But Goldengo goes down. The surprise terror always surprises, that's for sure. Darkrai comes in. So this thing is a threat to us, obviously. It does outspeed us. It has got the potential to flinch us to death. I think I should go for... I, I want to go for an, uh, another Terror Blast. I really do. Because I don't want to miss the Leaf Storm. I don't think we need another boost in Leaf Storm. So they go for a Dark Pulse. Are they going to flinch us? It two HK goes us. <gasps> flinches us. Okay, we need we need superior alive right now. That's what we need. We need it alive and well. So I'm gonna sack off Golurk here to a Dark Pulse because we unfortunately flinched, which does throw a big wrench into the works. Because that Dark Cry is a problem. It's a big problem. Golurk's a problem, a big problem, but it's big because it's big, not because it's an offensive threat. So Dark Pulse doesn't KO us, which is cool. We could have Bullet Punch for all they know. They may go into a Loma Mola here, so I am gonna Poltergeist just in case. They do withdraw, expecting potentially a bullet punch, and we could be Iron Fist. So that's a good that, that, that's a good little thing Golurk's just done. And they do bring in the Aloma Mola. We go for a Poltergeist that's going to attack them with their Rocky Helmet. It can't miss because we are no guard. And it does a clean nearly 50%, which is great. Let's go for another Poltergeist. They probably just go for a Flip Turn or a Scald. We outspeed them somehow. I don't know how Golurk outspeeds an Aloma Mola. They're both not invested in, in defense. They go for a flip turn, take out Golurk. Now that Aloma Malola is officially weakened, which means Arcanine could do something here. I mean, if we get, if we can weaken the Great Tusk, obviously. But here's the thing: if we get rid of that Dark Cry, which Dark Cry has come in, if we get rid of that Dark Cry with something like Arcanine or Corviknight here, I think we go Arcanine. I think we go Arcanine Wildfire. And we extreme speed. I think that's what we have to do. We have to extreme speed. I know they're going to go Great Tusk, but I'm going to go for the extreme speed anyway. They do withdraw the Dark Rye. Are they going to go with Loma Mola or are they going to go Great Tusk? Nah. That's going to be the Great Tusk, right? Yeah, Great Tusk comes in. We go for the extreme speed. Obviously, it doesn't do much damage to a Great Tusk. They aren't Rocky Helmet. They are Leftovers, which is great for us. That means we get to keep our Arcanine healthy. Happy and healthy. Now the real question is, what do we do here? I'm leaning towards Corviknight. Now I'm just hoping they're not Earthquake, Temper Flare. Because if they go for an Earthquake here and it fails, Temper Flare is going to double in power. 
which means that Corviknight is not going to appreciate it, that's for sure. So let's see what they do. So Stealth Rock. Stealth Rock is a good play. It's definitely going to hurt my Superior and my Arcanine, which is unfortunate. Um, I am going to have to defog here, that's for sure, which gives them a free switch into their Dark Cry. However, with their Dark Cry being the only thing that can KO my Corviknight, I'm not too worried. Let's go for that defog. And um, they do withdraw, which is great. Great, great, great. And they bring in a Loma Mola. Probably to get a regenerator. So they can switch out again. So we go for the defog. And that obviously does no damage to it. But we should. Hmm. They must be a minus nature speed a Loma Mola for it to not outspeed the go lurk. So do we U turn or are we Brave Bird here? I think we Brave Bird. I think we Brave Bird. We Brave Bird. They probably flip turn. They probably flip turn. I mean, we do get Rocky Helmet Chip, which is unfortunate. But it's fine. They go for a flip turn, which is going to give them some Rocky Helmet Chip as well. Which is great. Nearly KOs them, which is fantastic. And they're now going to go into Darkrai, right? Because Darkrai can, quote-unquote, finish us off. I'm thinking that's what they're thinking. Yeah, Darkrai comes in because it can, quote-unquote, finish us off. But. But, 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 but. Here's the thing. Doesn't, I don't think. I think we can live a Dark Pulse. I'm pretty confident we can live a Dark Pulse. We do, but we flinch. Are you kidding me right now? What is it with this game and flinching me? What is it with this game and flinching me? What am I meant to do? I Brave Bird again. They go for another Dark Pulse that's going to take us cleanly out. Okay, so... What do we do here? What do I do? What do I... Just tell me what to do, and I'll do it. Arcanine... <sighs> Sloking is going to have to come in. So I, I think they stay in an attack Sloking. I think that's what they do. They stay in an attack Sloking because it can't... It's weak to Dark Pulse, right? So we go for a Sludge Bomb. And hopefully, hopefully it's enough to KO the Dark Rye. They do withdraw the Dark Rye. Are they going to go Roaring Moon or Great Tusk? Nah, that's the Great Tusk. So we could potentially get some Poison shenanigans going on with the Great Tusk, which would be great. Sludge Bomb comes through. It does a nice bit of chip damage. Not Nothing like crazy. Um, they are a, by the looks of it, they are a, um, some sort of defensive. They lose nothing from going for Earthquake here. That's the problem that I've got. So, I'm going to Chili Reception. They go for a Headlong Rush. Shouldn't KO us. It does KO us. They are an offensive Great Tusk, which is very, very, very threatening. But at least we're in a position where we can take the Great Tusk out right now. Arcanine could pull this back for us. If the Dark Cry doesn't flinch us. That's the problem we've got. If the Dark Cry doesn't flinch us. So we go Superior. We always go Superior here. That Dark Cry is a problem. That Dark Cry is a problem. We 100% Leaf Storm here to take out the Great Tusk. And if we miss, then we miss. We don't miss, which is nice. Leaf Storm comes through. Great Tusk goes down. Now Arcanine has no switch in to the Head Smash because the Aloma Mole is too weakened. Um, unless they play around it and get the Regenerator back, which they could well do. Um, but it looks like that Loma Mola doesn't have Scald. It looks like it's a flip turn Loma Mola. Otherwise, they could have Scalded the uh, Corviknight earlier if they wanted to. So in comes the Roaring Moon. It's going to pop his booster energy. It's probably going to boost its speed just to screw with me. Um, attack. Okay, so that's not too bad. Have they Terrored yet? I don't think they have, have they? Do we Dragon Pulse? We Dragon Pulse. We always Dragon Pulse. They, they go for an Earthquake. They have speeders anyway. So um, that's me not knowing my speed tiers. So anyway, Superior goes down. They didn't Terra, so they could still Terra here. We are 100% going to Arcanine. We are 100% going to Arcanine, but the problem we've got with Arcanine is I do kind of need to close combat here. I do need to close combat here because it's the only way I'm going to take care of this Roaring Moon. And the problem we've got is it's not going to do enough damage to Aloma Malola. It'll take out the Dark Cry, but it's going to lower our defenses, meaning Dark Pulse will probably take us out. So what's the best move to go for here? Head Smash is higher base power. And it's Stab. Close Combat's lower base power, but it's super effective. I think Close Combat's the way to go, because Head Smash will probably miss, though, in my look. Close Combat comes through. It cleanly takes out the Roaring Moon, which is amazing. Does lower our defenses, though. So Roaring Moon is going to go down, which is great. They know we're Choice Scarf now. I don't think we can beat Darkrai. I don't I don't think we can unless unless they go for a Dark Pulse here. They bring Darkrai in. Unless they go for a Dark Pulse here and it doesn't KO us and we don't flinch. 
Arcanine could bring this back. So they go for the Dark Pulse. Is it going to KO us? It doesn't. We don't. Arcanine. Arcanine. Yes, please. The only problem we now we've got is that Aloma Mola. That Aloma Mola is a problem. Now, if they're not max HP, if they're max defense, max special defense, like a lot of people run, there is a chance we can do enough damage to KO with uh, close combat. Uh, no, not really. That regenerator is too... I thought it'd be a bit lower than that. Let's go for a close combat. So they're going to Terra. What type are they Terraing into? Probably Fairy just to resist the close combat, right? Because if we crit them with a the close combat, that's going to be painful. Dragon. <laughs> they're just terror. They're just terroring so that they can show that they're terroring, aren't they? That's pretty much what they're doing at this point. So we go for a close combat. Let's see if it takes them out. It doesn't take them out. Even, not even nearly. Not even nearly. Um, and I'm pretty sure the Rocky Helmet, right? Yeah, the Rocky Helmet. And I'm pretty sure they flip turn here, right? They Skull. Okay, Skull comes through. That's going to be the game. So that was a really close game again. So that's two back-to-back -back close games. Really fun stuff. I mean, I enjoyed that one. This team does really well. It's just unfortunate that we get flinched in certain places and all that stuff. So it, it, it is what it is. Hacks is hacks. But you know what? I had a lot of fun with these two games. And I really hope you guys enjoyed as well. GG. But anyway, here is the team. Try it out if you want to use the code at the top right corner of the screen. Let me know if you do use it. I want to hear your success stories, etc. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.